Hi, it's Dr. Mike with Execuspect Leadership Development, and I have a new book out called The Chameleon Effect, Counterintuitive Leadership. And I'd like to read a little bit to you from this so that you can get a, an understanding of the content and how it might help you in your organizational context. It's going to be the last chapter of the book called Visionary Leadership. To help you get a better understanding of the power of visionary leadership, I want to read a quote that I had placed at the beginning of this chapter. It says this, If you want to build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. That quote moved me, not just because of its depth of thought and meaning, but because I am a living testament of this happening. For you to fully grasp this, I want to tell you a story about, well, me. When I graduated high school in 1988, I did not go to college. I went right into the workforce, never really thinking that I would ever go to college. I worked several jobs, most of which I excelled in, due to my already having had a small family and recognizing the importance of receiving a paycheck. In a few of those jobs, I advanced into management and loved the responsibility that had been given me. Overall, I liked my work, but found myself on several occasions feeling like the work was repetitive and mundane. I would come into work wondering what my future was going to look like. One day, as I was walking into work, a co-worker and I met at the same door. At 5.30 in the morning, she huffed and said, There has to be more to life than this. I smiled, agreed, and provided some simple response. We went our separate ways and off to our workstations. I was a 24-year-old press operator in Northeast Ohio making parts for Freightliner trucks. My press would produce two side panels and the center panel for semi-truck sleeper cabs. The presses were hot and the fiberglass was miserable. But we were expected to produce 98 parts a day with a crew of seven people. One day, the engineers came out and paused operations so that they could install a device on our press. This device was called injection molding. About three quarters of the way through the curing process, the press would open up about two inches, then this fixed device would inject a black rubberized coating onto the part. Afterward, it would close again to complete the cycle. When the press reopened, there was this shiny black part. The concept behind this process is that it would save Freightliner millions of dollars per year in primer. They could receive the parts from us, then send it right to the paint department without using any primer. Additionally, this coating made their paint shine with a sheen that regular primer simply would not produce. Because I had been working with the engineers so closely on this project, they had approached me to work with Human Resources to develop a training program for all three shifts, since this would soon become standard procedure on all the presses. It was exciting, and it was my first taste of public speaking, group training, and curriculum development. I loved it. I was scared, but still, I found that love for teaching, training, and development. The company decided to send a small group from Human Resources and Management to Mount Holly, North Carolina, where the Freightliner plant was, to see these parts being assembled. And since I was the process trainer, they included me in on this trip. It was overwhelming. The factory alone seemed larger than life. Massive semi-trucks were being pulled through the assembly stations as workers put each part onto the truck. The colors were glorious. Red, blue, white, black, purple. Every color you could think of was represented on these trucks. Prior to that moment, I do not believe I had ever taken notice of the paint of a Freightliner truck. But then and there... These trucks seemed magnificent. Maybe it was all just psychological. At one point, I had asked if we could go to the staging area where they kept the sleeper cab parts that came in from Ohio. Upon entry into this area, I had one thing on my mind. I wanted to find the parts with my employee number stamped on the inside. I found them, and something happened in that room at that moment that changed my life. My attitude completely and radically changed about the job that I had done back in Northeast Ohio. No longer did I feel that my job was mundane. If I had ever felt that my job was meaningless, 
I did not feel that way right then. I felt proud. I felt accomplished. I felt like I was contributing to the cycle of the world. If you received a package at your house or went grocery shopping or bought car parts at the auto parts store, I played an integral role in making your life more comfortable and complete. I was at the very beginning process of literally creating a truck out of a pile of fiberglass that transported the products that you needed. I cannot tell you whether or not the few other people on that trip felt the same way, but I sure did. It changed me. It changed how I saw myself, my crew, and my company. Suddenly, I cared. Remember the girl at 5.30 a.m. who said, there has to be more to life than this? Well, I found that meaning, and I didn't even have to change jobs to find it. That trip put vision into the heart of this young worker who had no vision for himself or the work that he did. However, in that moment, I caught a glimpse of, of how molded fiberglass was making the world a better place, and it inspired me. Vision is such a powerful thing to catch. With vision comes hope, and hope comes the most insurmountable, and, and hope overcomes the most insurmountable of obstacles. If a leader is ever going to expect his or, or his or her organization to reach its goals, then there needs to be an intentionality of dispersing vision into the hearts of of the workers. Now, to be fair, I'm certain that this factory could not afford to fly every employee to every customer's location that we made parts for. That would not be feasible. But this is where creativity comes in. Leaders need to collaborate with their team to find ways to put that kind of vision into the hearts of their workers. Forbes.com reports that more than 50% of U.S. workers are not happy in their jobs. They reported pre-pandemic, America boasts the highest level of employment in decades. The stock market is booming, but something seems to be amiss. With an historic and robust economic expansion and all the good news surrounding it, there seems to be a large crack in the system. The mood for a lot of people in the country appears angry, discouraged, and resentful. End of quote. It is incumbent upon the leader to instill vision into the people that, that uh, alle and, and alleviate what is being felt or assumed within our businesses. Of course, some of the issues facing our workers today are not issues that will be fixed by a great vision statement or a company trip to a customer. But people still need hope. They need to know that they are contributing to society. They need to know that the job they are doing is literally making the world a better place. How is your company changing the world? Tell that story to your workers, but break it down even further. Tell them how they are changing the world. I spoke with someone quite some time ago and gave this very challenge. The response from him was that he felt like the words changing the world was too grandiose. So he did not feel compelled to cast such a vision. Leader, if you do not feel that your organization is changing the world for the better, then your workers will never feel it either. This is likely why 50% of workers are not happy in their jobs. If workers have a vision for the company and themselves, they will stay with an organization, regardless of any carrot and stick dangled out in front of them from other places of employment. To be sure, this is certainly not guaranteed to be 100% of the time, but if you cast this kind of vision, for your workers, you will see a reduction in annual employee turnover and a culture of positivity and productivity. It was because of molded fiberglass that I developed the passion for developing leadership skills. I knew that if someone like me, a 24-year-old kid with no hope, no skills, no drive, could find all of those things in one moment of vision casting, forever altering his perception on employment, then anyone could find that. Four years later, I went to college, and I continued learning and developing my understanding of leadership skills. Today, I am still learning, and still believing that one person within one organization can be the difference for that organization. I also believe that if every leader committed to adapting to counterintuitive leadership, we would see more leaders transform workers. Workers transforming business, 
and businesses transforming communities. Business success is not about what you sell or how much you sell. It is about who you, what you tell and who you tell. It's about setting goals, but more about investing into those who will move the organization toward those goals. It's about your people, always and forever. Successful leaders will become who they can and what they can for the good of their people that they might improve the quality of their lives, both professionally and personally. They recognize that organizational goals are important, but also realize that it is the people who are the company's greatest commodity. The challenge that lays before every leader is to resist the temptation to invest into the process and or profit issues of an organization exclusively. The greatest margin of success will always come from investing into your people. The first and best way is to become a, a better leader for them. Great leaders begin by investing into themselves for the good of the team. They radically, sacrificially, and selflessly exhibit the chameleon effect, counterintuitive leadership. I hope that you'll pick up a copy of this book. And as you read it, I hope it will inspire you. I hope it will challenge you. And I hope that it will help you find the level of success that maybe otherwise you may not have reached. Counterintuitive leadership is a powerful philosophy. Thanks for listening, and I hope to read another chapter for you at another time. Have a great day.